He is the author of this business of urban music, our entertainment attorney, James Walker, a regular contributor. We got out the new mugs for you here, you and Scott Gray, the regulars. We finally broke open the budget. We got this. We got a buffet backstage when you're done. Got a little shrimp, caviar, sushi. I saw the car service first. downstairs. Car service downstairs. Yes. All right, entertainment, legal stuff. Brangelina, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt settled uh, a lawsuit with a, a foreign paper over defamation issues. Sometimes these celebrities tend to let these things go. This is significant because they settled and the paper paid some money. Talk about the relevance. Very significant when you have Hollywood's number one couple, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, take on a British tabloid and say, hey, we're not going to let you get away with this. The tabloid back in January had reported that the couple was splitting up, that they had met with a divorce attorney and they were negotiating out who would get which kids. They have a whole We Are the World tribe of right. children. So they were supposedly meeting with a divorce lawyer and discussing how they were going to break up. Made the story up, basically. Basically made the story up. Matter of fact, the paper, News of the World, I think owned by the Murdoch mm -hmm. operation, News of the World said they acted in good faith. But the actual lawyer who they said met with the couple said he never met them, right. didn't know them. So the couple had originally asked for a retraction, which was refused. But now we know as of this week, retraction is coming, apology, and probably 2 or $3 million donated to their charity. Mm -hmm. And it's under, they have this act in the U.K. It's the Data Process, the 1998 Collection of Data Processing Act. And basically what it says is, a couple like that has a right to privacy, a fundamental right to privacy in the collection and use of their information. Even a celebrity couple, because knowing what happens, they're fair game and people can make stuff about them and no one cares. And so this is why it's relevant that now celebrities have a, you know, some kind of recourse, right? right? Well, they, like they've that. always had recourse. Many years ago, Johnny Carson sued. There was a, a toy that I will call Here's Johnny. Right. Remember. And I remember years ago, Johnny Carson sued because he felt they were playing with his sign on his tag of The Tonight Show. And from that point on, you always saw a kind of protection of the privacy rights, the likeness, the image of a celebrity. But that's more of a branding issue where before, if you had gossip type issue, sure. you could throw out stuff there in the past and there was really not much recourse. Now I think sure. celebrities are getting more emboldened because of the settlement now, you can see more celebrities saying, wait a second, that's not true and I'm taking action. It's one thing to say there's a rumor that Brad and Angelina aren't getting along. They're right. having some problems. That's one thing. or They're having arguments like some couples do. But it's another thing to say they've met with a divorce lawyer and they're dividing up the assets. Now, why should Brand Lena care? They're the most famous couple in the world. Why care? Why not just let her roll off your back and, and move on and walk you? They're the well, biggest I, couple in the, in the whole world. Well, yes and no. I think uh, there's, you are one of the biggest couples in the world, but I think there's still a level of we're human beings mm -hmm. and things hurt when you read them and you know they're false, and particularly when you have young children involved and you have a lot of marketing in this you know, love affair couple that they are. In some cases, they're not married, but in some cases, you know, you're married, you have a certain image you're projecting, mm. and a magazine like this one writes some kind of trashy story, so you want to protect your image. All right, another interesting lawsuit in mm -hmm. sports now. We have Lane Kiffin, the new controversial coach of sure. uh, USC in football. He goes coach poaching. He's uh, <laughs> trying to get the, He goes to a team, the Titans in the NFL, takes a coach there. The Titans now are suing, saying that he didn't go through protocol, that he didn't uh, ask for written permission. This is a big deal. This happens all the this, time, but really do teams sue another? This is a very big deal, and I think it stems from the reputation that Lane Kiffin has in Tennessee, mm -hmm. being a former coach of the University of Tennessee, leaving after 12, 12 or 14 months. Kind of a lawless He's uh, kind of a right. lawless guy. He tried to take someone from the Vikings coaching staff, allegedly. So I think the Tennessee Titans organization, through their company, said, hey, we're not going to stand for this. And it's kind of ironic. You know, USC is on the ropes right now as a whole oh, sure. with the whole Reggie NCAA. Bush and the NCAA violations uh, and giving back the Heisman this week. I think uh, because of their scenario, it's not far-fetched to go after this program that's kind of on the ropes already. And you have this renegade coach, Lane Kiffin, who talks to this guy, Cola, Kennedy Pola, who's under contract, right. that he can't talk to anyone else unless he gets written permission from the Tennessee Titans. And they basically just kind of circumvent that. So the bigger issue here is we don't mind you necessarily take, talking to our coach, but get our permission first. There's a protocol here of a professional courtesy you give right. if you want to talk to our coach under contract and not a lawsuit. Particularly a week or two before minicamp starts. Right, so it disrupts the whole it team. It disrupts the whole team. They brought him in in February, Coach Pola, and here we are July and now he's going to coach. You know, he's going to be an offensive coordinator for USC. So right. it's a promotion for him right. of a major top 20 program, but still. The contract was breached. The contract was clearly breached. Mel Gibson and baby mama drama. We <laughs> talked about it a couple weeks back where 
you know, uh, the tapes, the infamous tapes, and we're going back and forth. I said, what if? You know, it seems to me what's odd is that you have all these tapes she made. She stayed real calm, and he's just going off. And so I always thought it was odd that she stayed so calm and that she taped all those conversations. Now they're saying there could be some extortion involved. Surprise, well, surprise. And that's you going back and forth. The, you were one of the few guys in the media that kind of threw up the umbrella of, hmm, these tapes, she's calm, he's screaming, who tapes their arguments? Right. You threw that up in the beginning, whereas most of us focused on domestic abuse and mm -hmm. Mel Gibson, how and the words, do this? And, and, words and the inflammatory used. words. Now we see this week he meets with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. He supposedly brings in evidence that she's trying to extort him for a multi-million dollar payout. Right. And it is a surprise. Some, it, it is a shocker. It, some, it somehow overshadows those tapes now. And, and, and to his But credit, she has pictures saying that she was beat up, so you had that counter going back and forth. How does this whole mess get solved? What? Well, if, 30 he, seconds. if he can prove she was trying to extort him, it somewhat undermines her credibility. And if her credibility is undermined, then you have to question the photos, you have to question the tapes. There's also could a CD. Could hurt her custody, too, right? She, it? it could also hurt her custody. She recorded a CD. There's a fight over who owns that music because he was the executive producer. Spent and a lot of money on her, right? spent a lot of money on her. So right, it's going to be a really uh, interesting battle. All right. James Walker, he's our entertainment attorney. We want to thank all our guests, Michael Sharp, Alex Johnson, Daniel Smith, Scott Gray. You can send your show comments or requests or even watch us again at ctnow.com. And friend us on Facebook. Become a fan of the Stan Simpson Show. We're on Twitter, too. Look out for the tweets. Lori Perez and The Real Story are next. For the good folks here at Fox, Connecticut, I'm Stan Simpson. We'll see you next week.